Um, hopefully everyone can hear us, hear me okay. Um, welcome to this webinar on Solid Edge and CAMWorks for Solid Edge. Uh, this webinar really is about presenting the CAMWorks package, the machining package, that um, is now directly embedded into the Solid Edge user interface. Sorry, just bear with me. So this morning's webinar is sponsored and hosted by three partner companies. There's Edge PLM Software, uh, with the Australian Value Added Reseller, obviously, for Solid Edge. And my name is Lee Northend, and demonstrating Solid Edge today is Tom Harris. Then from NC um, CAT CAM Systems, we have Starling D'Souza, and his company is the Value Added Reseller for Geometric, the developers for CAMWorks. And then finally, we have Mark Vissel, the Senior Applications Engineer for Geometric. Now, the basic agenda today is that we expect to run for approximately one hour. Um, we'll start with a very, very short overview of Solid Edge, um, a very short demonstration on the synchronous um, side of Solid Edge and how we can deliver parts to the CAMWorks environment. Thereafter, Starling will take over and actually machine some of these parts and we'll show the associative links between the products. And then finally, Mark will wrap up with an overview of why CAMWorks obviously works so well with the Solid Edge environment and particularly the synchronous. So those of you that have not met me before, my name is Lee Northend and my contact details are on the, uh, on the screen in front of you. And uh, we want to show you why you should be using CAMWorks with Solid Edge. So what are the barriers to faster modeling um, with Solid Edge? Well, we have a very lot high labor cost here in Australia and uh, everybody is looking to be more efficient and go faster. So how do you get that advantage? Well, we think that using um, good CAD design with good manufacturing um, will give you those benefits. So what are some of the barriers that you might have to achieving that? Well, from recent studies we found that 39% of designers struggle with model creation. History-based tools, the traditional tools used for 3D solid modeling, um, use a complex rules to preserve shape and size. 57% of designers lack the ability to edit their own internal drawings. And 44% of those using traditional 3D modelers and um, history-based modelers lack the ability to deal with supply data. Now that's probably the biggest one for some of the people watching today. Being able to deal with multiple suppliers with multiple CAD systems um, and being able to bring it into a CAD package. And not only that, and being able to edit it. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by basically accelerated part design and part creation. And we use synchronous technology. Synchronous technology will enable you to make faster model changes. It will also have associative links to your um, CAMWorks product. And most important, you are able to edit imported supply data very easily indeed. Doesn't matter where it comes from. Inventor, Pro Engineers, SolidWorks, or standard neutral formats such as STEP or IGIS or whatever. So how do we do that? Well we do that with history free modeling. And um, history free modeling in Solid Edge is an extremely powerful tool. We use synchronous techniques and the idea is that we can accelerate the design by using, by automatically applying intent to the 3D model. So gone are the days when you're limited to the history um, and having to be bound by that specific history tree. And the benefits are that you are able to go up to 25% faster. Now, that is compared to traditional modeling techniques. Ideal for single or small assembly part and model creation. And we do that by using a, a range of different tools such as constraint-free modeling, enabling you to make very flexible changes. Live Rules is a unique tool within Solid Edge that preserves the intent. And all that is brings blazingly fast performance because there is no regeneration of the model. So import your supplier data 
into Solid Edge, make it manufacturable in minutes and transfer it directly to CanWorks. Okay. So the supplier data, how do we do that? We can place 3D dimensions directly on the model, make changes using a simple steering wheel and the live rules finds the designing team. So you are not bound anymore by going back to your supplier or customer and saying, we cannot open your models. Can you send us it in a different format? What if we need to make changes in order to make it manufacturable? This radius is the wrong size. Can we change it? You would now have the tools to be able to do that with Solid Edge. And all this means that you can get your model to the machine quicker, ready for programming. So the impacts of the business are no bottlenecks in design or modelling in order to get it to the machine. More repeat business because you can get work done quicker and ultimately you'll be more competitive on pricing. We have to compete in today's business. We have to compete with larger economies and the only way to do that is to be efficient. So with that, um, I'm going to hand over to Tom Harris now, and Tom will run through a very quick demonstration of Solid Edge, and then we will obviously get over to um, to uh, the CamWorks demo. So with that, um, thank you very much for your time, and I'll hand over to Tom. All right, thanks for that, Lee. Um, what we'll do, because Lee's been talking about importing supplier data, I figured I'd import a step file and we'll start working with that step file and just show you how simply you can use the design intent in these, in these supplier models. So you can see I've imported this model. It's quite, a, uh, quite an interesting portal plate and notice just by selecting one of the edges there's actually design intelligence already built into the model. However, we might want to give it a little bit more intelligence. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a plane and I'll just create this plane using some of the key points that already exist in the model. And what I'm going to do with this plane is I'm going to use let Solid Edge use this plane as a symmetry plane. So I'll just turn on symmetry about this plane, click on that as well, and there you'll notice that all of those, all of those different web thicknesses are changing all the way around the map. Now, I might not want to have to select that while I'm going. So I might want to set up symmetry that's permanent in this model. So what I can do is I can select mating faces and then I can continue on. I can select other symmetric faces as well. I'm just going to select a few in here just to give you an idea of some of the base functionality that you can generate. So now I've, got, I've created a series of relationships on this model and now what I'll do is I'll move this edge again and I don't even have to think about you know maintaining or what symmetry planes I need to work on because I've, I've set up those relationships. Keep in mind that this is imported from a step file so this is the power that you'll have for any model that you decide to work with. Now I might want to put a, a thickness on this web. So I'm just going to create a dimension and I'll drive that dimension. You'll see there's a number of options, a number of controls I've got for changing that thickness. I can change the thickness on that side. I can change the thickness on the other side or I can change it symmetrically. And you see as I just, I'm just rolling the mouse I'm updating the thickness of these webs all the way around the model. I can also just key in my value and it makes the change to the model all the way around. Now that's good but what happens if I don't have for example 
a 7.94 millimetre um, mill or I want to use a different radius. I select the radius and I might want to make that an 8 millimetre. Now notice, even though this is an imported model, it's gone round and given me the option of selecting all of those radii that are that that, that are that size. I can choose to you know, select one or more. So I'll do all of them and this is a different radius. I'll make them eight millis as well. So very, very rapidly I'm building intelligence back into this model. Now speaking of intelligence, I can also recognise holes. For example, I've got a centre hole. I'll just move the model so you can see it. I've got a centre hole. I've got all of those outside counterboard holes and I've got some smaller holes. Now you can see the dimensions on those holes are a little bit strange. I might want to just make them some standard sizes. So make this one a six millimetre hole, 10.5 counterbore, five millimetres down. And in this one, I actually want to make it an M6 thread. Okay. Lastly, I'll change that one just to a two millimetre hole. Say so, okay. Then it goes, applies all of the intelligence in those hole features to this imported model. So in a matter of you know one or two minutes, I've got a whole heap of intelligent holes, um, features, which I can very, very quickly and easily change just with a couple of clicks of the button. So that's the first sort of part I wanted to show you. Very, very rapid editing and control over your design models, whether they be created in the CAD system you're using or imported into Solid Edge. Um, it makes no difference to Solid Edge. So I'll move on now um, to another file. And this one I just thought I'd show you some techniques for working within an assembly. And I've, I've saved these files and sent them to Stalin so he can uh, machine them as well. Um, we're in different locations so he's already got the files. Now this, this is a punch die and we might need to create a punch plate for this. So in Solid Edge, I just very quickly say I want to create a new part and edit it in place and I'll give it a material. I'll say this one's going to be 316 stainless steel. Call it punch. It creates the file and brings it in and I'm now editing this file in the context of the assembly which with synchronous makes it very, very powerful. Because I might want to grab these edge chains and I'll just extrude them down by 10 millimetres. Now they're the, they're the punches that I want to use. Next, I'll grab the faces. I'll use both the internal and external loops. And this time, I'm going to use these faces and I'll just bring this up by you know, maybe 15 millimetres. Very, very quickly, I've got the basis for a punch. You might say, yeah, but there's a hole in the middle. I can just bring them together to fill in that gap. Now, I might also need to, you know, because I don't want the entire of the, the cutting edge engaging all at the same time, so I might need to rotate this, this face. So I'm just going to reposition my steering wheel. And now I can rotate this face and notice how it all behaves symmetrically, which is basically what you want for a tool of this style. And I can just key in the rotation dimension and I've now got my dot or my punch 
manufactured so it's ready for creation, ready for tooling. But what happens if then, you know, I, I decide I might need to move these edges a little bit? Well, I'll just step back to the assembly and what I can do is in the context of the assembly, I can grab that entire pin and I can just reposition the entire pin, I'll say five millimetres. And notice that edit has occurred not just for the punch, um, the punch part, but also for the die if I need to make changes as I'm going. So it allows you very, very rapid um, control of basically all parts in an assembly um, in, in a very, very short amount of time. Now, you know, you can you can go in and you can you can make changes to various bits within the assembly. Now I might make that six millimeters. And you can do all of this from in the context of the assembly. So your workflow is quick and basically seamless as you're working through your parts, preparing them for manufacturing. So that's just another part there. Um, we'll move on to a third part now. Um, Stalin can manufacture that punch a bit later. And the third part here, I've just generated some sketches. This might be the, the mould for a pair of sunglasses, for example. I've just prepared the sketch because, you know, you don't need to watch me sketching. I'm sure you're more interested in actually creating these parts. And with Synchronous, I can just select the region and then I just use key points within the model. I drag that up. Then I might want to just cut off the top of the part. so that I've got the start of my sort of lens shape, if you like. Now, obviously, I'm going to need a base on this mould as well. So I just grab my regions and I just drag them down. Now, you probably see me toggling symmetry on and off. That's just quickly tapping one key on the keyboard. So it's very, very user-friendly and easy to do. Now, you'll also know notice these dimensions that were on the sketches are now transferred across to the 3D model. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more on that later. Um, I might also need to put some rounds on you know, because sharp edges don't always work with manufacturing. And I can just type in my dimension. If I want to change that at any point later, I just click on the dimension and ch click on the face and change it. Um, so we'll just put a lip around here to represent the frame of the sunglasses. The solid edge has a quite nice lip utility, gives you a preview, width, height, then it creates that lip all the way around. So it's looking good. We might need to put little, you know, some rounds in here as well. Five millimetres is probably a little bit big. I'll just bring that down to a one millimetre round. So it's beginning to look like a pair of sunglasses. However, you might want to style it a little bit more. You might say, well, actually, I don't really want this angle to be five degrees. So I just click on the on the dimension, and I'll say type in 10 degrees, for example, I might want to try 10 degrees. And notice it updates very, very quickly and simply. Now, you know, you might say, well, that's a pretty easy update. Um, how about something more complex? Well, let's just say you might want to change the angle of this face, which is a much more complex update. And I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see it all. And then I perform a rotation to provide a little bit of sort of angle or attitude on the lens. And you notice that 
the lip all the way around the outside updates as well. So you've got a lot of very, very powerful control over this model. Now this dimension here is actually the dimension between the centre point of these sort of eyebrow arches. And I can also just key in a different value there. And it updates, gives you very, very rapid control over the style and the shape of the sunglasses. Now, you know, you, you might not actually be doing this level of design, but I really wanted to show you the level of control that you can have when editing in Solid Edge for even very, very complex parts like this. And, you know, you can add chamfers and that kind of thing very, very quickly and easily. So that's three parts. Um, just to give you a bit of a taste of how quickly and easily you can not only design but also edit parts within Solid Edge. So I'll now hand back over to Stalin. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, that's the part that Tom just did. I will. Um, I'll go through this uh, because it's just fresh in your mind. So I'll just go and do the machining on this. It's small here. Uh, as discussed before, Camworks is an add-in for Solid Edge. So when you install Camworks, it sits inside Solid Edge with all your toolbars and all the functions that you need to create the toolpath. So again, we can select uh, different types of machines. Uh, we do support various post processes. Uh, if it is not already there, we can create the post processes for you as well. So uh, it also comes with a, a standard post generator where you can uh, create your own posts once you get to know the software a bit better. With this part, I'll first thing I'll do is say I want machine a three-axis feature. So just to machine this mold, I'll window pick what I want to machine, okay. and I can select the type of pattern I want to do. So let's say I want to do a constant step forward, and I'll select OK to that. And once I've done that, I can just quickly generate what we call operation plans. So uh, Camwox has its own database, so you can create your own strategies to, to machine this. So for instance, it's picked up uh, a 12 mil end wheel to do the roughing, and then it will do a constant step over, and it will also do what we call pencil milling to do a little corners that, um, that Tom has just put in. So I'll accept that and say gender tool part. Um, so as you can see, it, it creates those tool parts. So for instance, um, that's my first roughing tool part. Okay, and with the ball nose, obviously, if you go and machine all those um, uh, 3D surfaces. Okay. Um, it's easy to edit. I can just double click on them and I could change the stepos and so on. So um, if I change that to say one mil. Okay. So I can regenerate the tool part for you. Okay. And the other important thing um, Tom talked about is the ability to change the model, say, say for example, I want to change that to say 20 mil, yeah. and I'll change this one to say 85, okay, again, let's make a different angle as well, okay. and so the model has already changed a fair bit. Let's just make this one say 30 mil, 35 mil. 
it's a, it's a fairly different model. As soon as you make changes in your soldage, uh, Camux can automatically recognize this change and I'm only changing what's so it's only update what's changed. So I'll just click on the light update button. Okay. And you can see the toolpath has been updated. So it takes less than a few minutes to, to update the toolpath uh, to the new model. So again, if I, if I save this, uh, this model, I mean, we are changing, we are changing, you could change the name or you could keep the same name, but we are saving it as a solid edge model, so uh, we're not adding any any extensions, so all your two parts and all the data is saved as a solid edge file, so uh, that's a fairly uh, quick uh, two parts, so I'll, I'll use uh, of the other part that uh, Tom did. This is again, um, it's got some angles and a typical 2D part. I will again go and um, click on this button. Uh, it's one of the key features which I'll explain a bit more as well is we can extract most of the prismatic machinable uh, features. So say for example, uh, it automatically picked up the pocket it wants to do. Uh, it picked up some holes and it automatically creates other setups as well. So if you don't need it, I could simply delete those two parts or features that has picked up. Um, again, if you don't need to machine some of the features, I could uh, right click on it and say suppress those features so it won't machine those features so uh, it picked up those pockets so I'll um, machine them so let's say generate operation plan and generate the tool path so it automatically generates the tool path it's fairly again uh, easy to uh, pick up a new tool or I can have my own tool crib and I can replace those tools quickly. Uh, we also have uh, a feeds and speed library so you can set up your uh, feeds and speeds in the library so depending on the type of tool and depth of cut you picked up it automatically puts the feeds and speeds for you. Again uh, in Camux um, you can interactively put uh, tool parts as well. Say for example, I want to machine this pocket so I can say it's an open pocket or depending on what you want to machine. I simply click on the face that I want and I can put the depth so, or I can say go up to the stock. So if I say up to the stock, it will go up to the stock that you specify. Or I can just simply say whatever depth I want to machine that pocket to. Uh, I can make use of um, solid edge features and say I want to avoid this. Okay. So I'm simply adding those islands as my avoid features. Okay. I click and say OK and I'm going to finish them. So you will see here, if I generate operation plan, you will see a tool path has been generated. Again, um, we do have what we call volume rule, which is a high speed machining strategies where uh, the machine uses you know, high speed machining tool paths to machine these roughing pockets. Generate tool part. Uh, again, it gives uh, flexibility if I want to move this tool part before this drilling, I can simply uh, drag them up the order. Uh, now, we also have an inbuilt um, simulation which works 
uh, inside Solid Edge again. So I can quickly verify, I can make changes. As you can see that high speed toolpath, it always um, works from outside and then comes in. I can stop that and as you can see um, quickly, um, Tom has put in some angles here on this face. So I can quickly add that feature as well. So I can go insert multi-surface feature, pick the type of feature that you want to machine. So those four and just go insert so we've got a three axis machining now so if I say generate tool path here okay so it's going to do some roughing there and also a nice 3D tool parts to do those angles. Yeah. The other part that um, Tom did was um, this one. This part here really shows the, the power of CamWorks. In a sense, uh, it can automatically recognize all these features. So if I hit this button, Camux picked up pretty much all those features. Okay. And I can say, okay, generate operation plan. Okay. And I will generate those two parts. As you can see, it picked up all those pockets, the holes, and the lot. Okay. Again, it will let you change them as well, but I can let you organize a bit better as well. So if I say sort operation, I can say I want to do the face milling first, center drill, drill, and so on. So if I apply, it will sort those in that order. The other thing, as you can see, Got lots of tool parts here, but we can combine those tool parts so we can manage it better. So I can say combine all these operations. Okay. So it shortens the tool part and I can manage it a lot better. Uh, I can go back and I can check that. Again, I can change the order of the pockets and so on. Um, the other thing we could also do is, as you can see, say you want to quickly add a, a chamfer on these pockets. So I can highlight the tool part I want. I hold the control key and it will copy that tool part. So I'll double click on that newly created tool part. I'll say I want to machine the chamfer with a new tool, say um, counting tool, and it will search the library and tell me what tools are available. So let's say I want to use a 12 by 90. Okay. So I'll select that tool, okay, and. I would say I want to machine the chamfer, say one mil chamfer. And just by doing that, I'll generate the tool part. And we've got a nice little chamfer there. So you can simulate it as well if you wanted to. Okay, so I can change or the other advantage is if that's what I like I could save that operation 
as my save operation plan and I can save that strategy for the future. So if I select rough finish and chamfer, it will automatically do the chamfers on those features for me. Yeah. Um, again, one of the other features that we discussed was say I want to change this to say 5 millimeter. So we're changing the partner, so I'll say that to I changed the, the model. As soon as I clicked on the operation again, of course it's going to ask me to update, so update. And you'll quickly see that the tool path has been updated for the new model. Again, I could go back here and say, I uh, want to change any of those holes. Okay. Uh, or these holes, or any holes, so I can right click on that and say I want to make it as a, as a thread. And I'll go to the library and pick uh, whatever that is, say M4. Okay. Once I do that, if I right click on it and say generate operation plan from the library it will automatically uh, pick a countersink, uh, appropriate drill size hole and the taps. Um, by selecting the type of tap you want it will automatically add three operations to it. Uh, so obviously key here is um, you're always working inside Solid Edge and any changes that you make, your tool path is updated with it. So obviously if I click on a post processor, okay, I can quickly have a look at my codes. Okay. One more thing I want to show is um, we, we also uh, support lights as well. So say if it is a cylindrical part, again, same thing applies. So you can select um, your stock size. So depending on what size, okay. I can change those. I can change the diameter of it, say 106 millimeter. So that's my stock. But once that's done, again I click on this machine extractable features. Uh, you can see here it creates turning features. So it wants to do the face operation first, wants to do OD, wants to do some grooming, and lastly the cutoff. Uh, I'll say generate operation plan from them. Again, depending on your tools, you can create your own tool crib. So it will pick uh, proper tools that exist in your turret or in your library. Once that's done, I'll generate the tool part. Okay. And I can go and check that in my simulation. Okay, I'll slide. Okay, once that's done, say for example, I want to add threading on this face here. Again, I can right click or I can go to the operation and say I want to use a threading operation. Okay, and I can tell it it's an OD threading. I can say that's a thread. And I just simply click on okay, that edge that I want to machine. Okay, and I'll say OK. Once that's done, again, 
I can change the parameters of the thread. So I can say major diameter is 30 by 5, 30.5, okay. and the thread depth, let's say 2.5 mil, and the pitch is 2 mil. Once that information is there, I can generate the tool part. Okay. And as you can see, the tool part obviously has stopped there. Okay. It's quite easy to modify. Say I want to make that a little bit longer so it goes past. And I can quickly preview that. So it automatically gives you the updated tool part. If I'm happy with it, I just click OK and your tool path is generated. Again, I can click. Obviously, we want to do that before the cutoff. So just move it around. And I can go and simulate the tool path. So all this, um, including milling and late, um, is totally integrated uh, inside Solid Edge. Uh, that's just a quick overview of what CAMWorks can do inside Solid Edge. I'll now hand over to to Mark to give you a bit more information on on CAMWorks. Thank you, Stalin. Uh, Thank you for the demonstration and as we've been discussing, the key to the faster time to market as we see it is CAMWorks and Solid Edge and the combination of synchronous technology along with CAMWorks. And so this, this diagram uh, shows how this, the combination of this technology works. Um, we start up at the top by identifying features and using automatic feature recognition to recognize machinable features on parts. Um, we apply the best, best practices using knowledge-based machining. And you can capture your best practices of your best programmers and machinists and store them um, and reuse those automatically. And then you can uh, make changes to the design um, if necessary. And of course the toolpaths will update automatically to any changes that are made. And you can see at the center of this diagram the synchronous technology which uh, Tom showed you um, and how quickly you can make changes to the part using Solid Edge. So CAMWorks is fully embedded um, inside Solid Edge. Um, as we've discussed, it's CAD compatible, so you can bring in models from a number of other places, and CAMWorks works exactly the same way on imported models as it does on native Solid Edge models. And we also support industry standards like STEP and ASIS and Parasolids and so on. And of course, one of the keys to CAMWorks is the fully, auto, uh, fully automatic automatic feature recognition, or AFR as we call it. And AFR will recognize over 20 different types of machinable features. It also creates fully associative features, so if the model changes, the toolpaths will update automatically. And these are machining features as opposed to design features, um, and so these machining features can be treated um, separately and adjusted separately as well. And the key to this automatic feature recognition or the result of the, of the automatic feature recognition is uh, faster programming time as compared to traditional CAM software um, by up to 90%. And automatic feature recognition can recognize OD turn features as you can see in, in Stalin's example as well as ID turn features and also 
uh, two and a half axis prismatic features on milled parts. And CamWorks, of course, uh, also uses knowledge-based machining. And using knowledge-based machining, you can capture and reuse your best practices. So you can capture the best practices of your best programmers and machinists and store them in the database. This also helps with new programmers. With uh, When a new programmer comes on board, he can benefit from the programmers who have been there many years and know how to machine and program these parts. So the programmer, new programmer can get up to speed much more quickly. This is a true knowledge-based machining. Um, it, is, it is the way CamWorks works. It's not just an add-on product like some, some of the other CAM systems. And as we, we discussed, you can store and reuse those best machining strategies. And this eliminates repetition, so you're not programming the same uh, features over and over. Um, instead, those, those best practices can be stored and are automatically applied to features the next time that those come up on a part. And it's fully customizable, so it allows companies to be able to customize and capture their own best practices and uh, put those into the technology database. And synchronous technology and the uh, automatic feature recognition and knowledge-based machining of CamWorks really makes for a winning combination. And as you can see, you know, the toolpaths will update automatically to changes made to the part and uh, the, the changes can be made very quickly using the synchronous technology inside Solid Edge. So the, one of the advantages is the CAD and CAM model become one and the same. Um, all the data is stored within a single file. And it's stored automatically. So as soon as the file gets saved, it's stored. This also helps with uh, control over the file. And there's no extra files to maintain or manage. And no more geometry or translation errors. Um, so there's a real advantage here of always being assured that you're machining the current revision of the part. Um, oftentimes it can get confusing about which, which revision is being machined. And of course, changes to the model, um, you know, the toolpaths update automatically. And this accelerates the whole research and development process. So you can make changes quickly and easily using the synchronous technology and the tool paths uh, update automatically. And it also reduces scrap by eliminating errors, uh, like I mentioned about being, a, being, you know, machining the wrong revision of the part. Stalin also mentioned about the volume mill. There's two and a half axis and three axis volume mill tool paths. This is an ultra-high-performance toolpath generator for rough milling. And that can reduce your cycle times on the machine by up to 80 percent. Significantly reduce the, uh, the, or I'm sorry, significantly increase machine utilization and reduce cycle times. It also saves on tooling costs. Um, it, the tool life gets, actually gets extended by using the, this, this technology. It uses the full flute length of the tool rather than just the end, end of the tool. And it also avoids broken tools and the resulting crashes. So that can reduce your maintenance costs and increase the life of your machine as well. So CamWorks for Solid Edge is currently available. The, the modules that are currently available are the two and a half axis milling, the three axis milling module, uh, two axis and four axis turning, as well as the volume mill add-on. Uh, later this year, in December of this year, um, we will be releasing the four and five axis simultaneous milling modules, along with the high speed machining, as well as the mill turn module for up to eight axis, and uh, the wire EDM module. And then in the first quarter of 2014, we'll also be releasing the CamWorks Virtual Machine, which is a true G-code simulator, a uh, machine simulator, um, as well as the synchronous machining module for, uh, for, 
four axis turning. And the benefits of using Camworks for solid edge, as we've discussed, they're reduce your, you can reduce your time to market significantly. And there are many companies who are, who are already benefiting from, from uh, Camworks for solid edge in, in, this, in this respect. You can also reduce your programming time and cycle time. Uh, the parts that used to take days or hours to program can be programmed in minutes, as, he, as he was demonstrated by Stalin. And, uh, and you can also reduce your cycle times using volume mill and the ultra high performance tool paths. You can increase your quality of the parts because you're going you're, you're to be using knowledge based machining which improves the consistency and the quality. It imposes standardization um, in programming and, and this is a terrific thing. So the best practices of your best machinists and programmers can be captured and reused whenever you're programming parts. And this also helps reduce scrap, um, and, and and as we mentioned, you you won't be machining the wrong revision of the model because the the CAM and CAD data is all stored within one file. And you can reduce your tooling cost by through standardization, um, and using the optimal methods, and significantly increase your capacity as a result. So I think that about wraps it up. And if you'd like to find out more, um, you can always go to www.camworks.com. And uh, with that, I will turn it back over to Lee for, for a wrap up. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And um, I hope you've uh, got a bit of a, an idea on how uh, Camworks now works. Um, we. Uh, solid Edge, and uh, if you obviously have any questions, then please feel